Hello, welcome to the video on how to change the batteries in your Cobot. So there are two battery packs, lithium uh, battery packs that are six volt that are located under this cap on J2. One of these battery packs retains the memory location for joints one, two, and three, and the other one is for four, five, and six. If the battery packs uh, are become uh, depleted, you will actually lose the location on your joints on your robot. And then you'll have to actually remaster the robot. If that for some reason happens to you, please call our service department and they'll walk you through getting it remastered. The way to avoid that is to apply power to the robot, not just plugging it into the wall. It actually has to have uh, power flowing through the controls. You have to have the control turned on. When the control is on, it's not using battery power. If for some reason you're going to just store your cobot in the corner somewhere and not use it for a while, uh, I would recommend turning it on maybe once a week just to see uh, that there's no battery alarms. Where you'll see the battery alarms will be at the top of the pendant on your alarm uh, bar there. You're going to see something like a BLAL or a BZAL. A BLAL is a battery low alarm. When you see that alarm, I recommend getting some battery packs on order from us as soon as possible so you can replace them. If you see a BZAL alarm, I would recommend leaving the cobot turned on until you can get some new battery packs, otherwise it will lose its location. Now if you just turn the, the cobot on after some time in storage and it says BZAL, it's most likely already too late and you're going to have to remaster. But if, you're happen, if you have been using it and you had a BLAL, L, excuse me, BLAL alarm and it became a BZAL, leave the power on so that way you can still retain the memory until you get new battery packs installed. So, I'm going to walk you through how to change these battery packs. We're going to do this with the power on. And you should have a sticker right above the cap that talks about uh, leaving the power on as you change the batteries. This ensures that when we disconnect the batteries, we're not going to lose position. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually turn this robot so that J2 is somewhere over here off the ta uh, table, so that when I'm using my a T-handle to get the screws out, I'm not running into the table. So a few of the tools you're going to need to do this job. You're going to need a 2.5 millimeter T-handle and a 3 millimeter T-handle. Of course, you can also use regular Allen keys. Uh, if you have a set of those, those will work as well. The T-handles make it a little bit easier. Also, you're going to need either a mallet, or in this case, I have a small punch with a, a bulky hammer. I'm going to just tap the cover. There is a gasket on there that is reusable, but that gasket tends to stick pretty tight, so we'll, we'll probably need that to get that loose. So next, I'm going to uh, take the cover off. Underneath there, there's a cage that holds the two batteries in place, and then there's just two plugs. So we'll walk through that next. Okay, so first I'm gonna take my three millimeter T-handle, and I'm going to remove the six screws that are holding this cover on. There's number six. Now I recently just had this cover off, so it came off loose. Um, if for some reason yours is too tight on there and you can't get it to budge off even but just tapping it with a mallet lightly, there is a, a kind of a, a flat area up here. I recommend taking the punch, just putting it on, catching the edge of that, and just tapping it and it should pop loose. It might be a good idea to have a second person so you have another pair of hands to hold it when you tap it that it doesn't drop and fall off. So now I'm going to take that cover off and I recommend setting this down so that we don't get any dirt on the on the uh, gasket there. We want to keep that nice and clean and it is a reusable gasket. Next I'm going to take my two and a half millimeter uh, T-handle. Again I'm doing all this with the power on. There are four small screws that hold this cage on. I recommend being really careful when you take these out because if you don't and you drop that screw down inside the arm, it might be a little difficult to try and retrieve it.
two. So now I can remove this cage. I'm going to pull on that gently and it will catch on those wires if you're not careful. These two little tabs can catch on that. So you want to make sure when you take that off, you're being really careful. Then there's a little plug right in here. I'm just going to push in on the tab and I'm going to pull that plug right out of the plug that it's plugged into. And there are little plastic C-clips uh, uh, that are holding these battery packs in place. You just pull it straight out, put the other ones in and then just reverse the order. So I'm gonna plug that back into there. I'll plug this back into there, making sure I hear a click so I know it's positively connected. Give the plastic plug a little tug, don't pull in the wires. Now I'm ready to put the cage back on and just reverse the order. So those tabs go down around the wires and they go underneath the battery packs and this tab goes over the battery packs. Now I can simply put in my four socket head cap screws that hold that in. I can put the cover back on and put in the other six socket head cap screws that hold that on and you're all set to go. Again, making sure you do this with the power on. If you have any other questions, please feel free to give us a call and watch another or watch our other videos. Thank you.